Users of Wonderware Historian can integrate and historize data from their multitude of different process hardware using a sweet link connection to a data server with drivers available for those different hardware types. OmniServer is a user configurable sweet link as well as OPC DA and UA server that allows users to create custom protocols using device manufacturer documentation detailing the communications protocol, all without having to write custom code. This video will walk through how to make a basic connection from Wonderware Historian via the SuiteLink interface to the OmniServer Universal Server for integrating non-standard devices such as barcode scanners, scales, RFID systems, sensors, and more. Now before we dive into the configuration, as a prerequisite for SuiteLink connections from any Wonderware client, the Wonderware common components for SuiteLink must be installed on the same machine as OmniServer. If you're running your Historian or any other Wonderware client on the same machine as OmniServer, you're good to go. This is only a concern if you're making a remote SuiteLink connection to OmniServer. In that situation, you'll need to make sure the Wonderware common components are installed prior to installing OmniServer. These components are available for install from the Wonderware device integration disk or by installing either OI Gateway or FS Gateway with older Wonderware versions. For this demo though, I'm making a local connection with the story and installed on the same machine as OmniServer. I already have and uh, so I already have a topic defined in OmniServer. Here are my OmniServer configurations. So if I go to my topics list, I uh, already have already have a topic defined that will simulate live process data from a device to prove our sweet link connection with the historian is working correctly and showing changing data. Here in my OmniServer configuration, you can see my topic is named Sim Device, and I'm going to open up the properties. I'm using the client underscore test protocol together with the random device to simulate live device data. This protocol and device combination does install with OmniServer, including the free trial version, so anyone can use this as a tool for simulating live data to test your client connection settings. You also see here you also see here an update setting, which is measured in milliseconds and defaults to 1000. This controls the polar update frequency from the device OmniServer is communicating with when the connection is non-OPC. So, since we're making a sweet link connection from Historian, any items we access will be pulled at a rate of once every 1000 milliseconds. This is important because this is where you can fine tune the frequency of requests to your devices from OmniServer when you're making a non-OPC client connection. So we're going to keep that default of 1,000 milliseconds here. And I'm just going to quickly go over to my protocol section. I want to open that client test protocol that I mentioned. And we're going to take a look at the item list. So here, here's my item list. I can see what items uh, are available for this protocol. And for this demo, I'm going to be connecting to the integer read item specifically. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of the protocol, and with my OmniServer set up to simulate the data that I need, I can go ahead and move on to the Historian configuration. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up my Orchestra System Management Console. And uh, my first step in here is to create a new I.O. server type. So I need, to, I need to drill down into my tree, so I'm going to expand Historian, and then I need to expand the Historian group. I need to expand down to this management con uh, this configuration editor here. I'm interested in the system configuration and data acquisition. So you can see here uh, the uh, entry for I/O server types. So I need to create a new I/O server type. So I'm going to click right click here and select new I/O server type, and that's where I can enter my information for OmniServer. So I've got a field for application name. OmniServer Suite Link application name is OSRVPOLL, so OSRV poll. And uh, the EXE name is going to be similar to that. It's just OSRV poll.exe. And, uh, and for the description, I'm just going to enter OmniServer. That is optional, but it is, it is nice to have a user friendly name to describe what this IO server type is. And uh, I can leave the revision blank, and I'm going to go ahead and click Finish to create my I/O server type. And if I look over here in my list, you can see that I/O server type OSRV Paul Omni server is now available in the list of I/O server types. So now that that's defined and available, I need to configure a new I/O server using that type. So further down the data acquisition section, I find my IDAS, which I need to right-click on that. And I need to define a new I.O. server. Now, as uh, 
Previously mentioned, my Astorian and Omni server are installed on the same machine. So for the IO server location, I'm going to enter localhost for the local machine. And for my IO server type, I'm going to select that OSRV poll that we just created. And I'm going to keep the default protocol type and uh, description and alt server location are optional. So I'm going to go ahead and leave those blank and I'm going to click finish here. So you see there's my new I.O. server. Now that I have that created, I can create a new topic to match my topic in OmniServer that we saw earlier. So I'm going to right click on that I.O. server and create a new topic. Now here I simply need to enter the topic name to match the topic I showed you earlier in my OmniServer configuration. So I'm just going to enter sim device. And uh, all the other settings in the topic can just remain at the default. So I'm going to go ahead and click finish to complete my topic. And now that I have a topic, if I expand my server, you'll see there's my topic. Now that my topic's created, I can go ahead and add a tag to my topic. So I'm going to right click on this topic. And I need to select the type of new tag that I want. Now, since the data from my integer read tag will be unsigned integer values, I want to select a new analog tag as my type. Now, for the unique tag name here, you, you can enter any meaningful tag name you'd like to represent your tag data in Historian. Now, I'm going to just enter the same name as my item from OmniServer, so I'm going to en enter here, integer read. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. Now, I'm going to skip the optional description, uh, but I do want to make sure that the max value here um, is, is increased to the maximum allowed value to ensure that my values from OmniServer are logged properly. So I'm going to go ahead and, ahead and increase this. I'm going to max it out. Um, I'm just going to type in as many nines as possible until it's maxed out. And then I'm just going to keep the defaults. I'm going to keep the defaults for everything else here in the general section and click next. And that brings us to the acquisition section. Now, here I'm going to keep the default acquisition type of IO server acquisition since my data is coming from my IO server, Omni server. And uh, my IO server, you'll see that's already pre filled with my OSRV poll. And my topic name is also pre filled with the topic that I defined. So uh, for, the, uh, for the item name, this needs to match my item name from Omni server exactly. So I'm going to go ahead and enter integer read again here. And that matches my item name from OmniServer that we saw earlier. Now, we get to the raw type section. I need to select integer because that matches the type of data that I'm going to be receiving from my integer read tag. And now I'm going to set the size. I know that that item is a 32-bit unsigned integer, so I'm going to set that to 32 unsigned to match the data that I'm going to be receiving from integer read from OmniServer. So then I'm going to go ahead and click. I'm not going to apply any scaling to this. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And that brings me to the storage section. Now, here I just want to keep the default of delta, uh, meaning that every time there's a value change, it will be logged. And I'm not, and I'm not going to specify any dead band down here, um, as I, I do want all value changes, no matter how insignificant, to be logged. So I can go ahead and click Finish, and that will complete my new analog tag. You'll see there's my integer read tag that's been added to my topic. So now that I've completed configuration of the required components in Historian, I just need to commit, it my, commit my pending changes. So if I go back over here to my tree view in the SMC, I'm going to right click on configuration editor, and I'm going to select commit pending changes, and I get this pop-up confirming, and I want to go ahead and click the commit button to confirm, and now that it's confirmed that the database changes were committed, I'm going to click OK there. <laughs> and now, um, if it isn't already started, uh, which I know mine is not, I need to start my historian so that it connects and starts collecting data from my OmniServer item. So I need to right click on my management console here in the tree view and start historian. <laughs> And I'll just need to enter my user and password to approve the start. So my login name is already populated. I just need to put my password in and click OK. I'm going to take a look at my status here.
and I should start I'll start seeing these historian modules initializing and starting you can see some of those are already starting to are already uh, in the process and there all of those have started so if I actually go to the data acquisition section I can see my OSRV poll is actually started and you'll see that our status is receiving data for one tag so I know that uh, I know that I'm now successfully communicating with OmniServer. Uh, so now that I should actually have history data for my OmniServer integer in the historian database, I can verify using the OneDoor historian client. So I'm going to go down here and launch the query portion of the OneDoor historian client. And uh, but you could also use the trend client uh, for OneDoor historian as well. But I'm specifically using the query client. And uh, I've actually already configured my WonderWare Historian server um, that I want to connect to in here, um, and that was just using that. That was just using that server name, which I got that from the SMC, and the same login information that I just used a few moments ago to start the historian. So you'll see in my tag list my new my new item integer read. So I just want to go ahead and select that item from the list of available tags, and I can select my query type from up here in this drop down. So I'm actually going to select history values so that we can see the, see the time series data that has been logged since I started the historian a few moments ago. Um, so let me just select history values. And you'll see that's logging that's going through that's logging my that's logging my values um, I've got good quality um, good value timestamps all my values are being historized so that that tells me that my connection on the server was successful and the historian is actively logging values um, that are as they change from my Omni server process data so you've just seen how straightforward it is to set up a simple sweet link connection from historian to the Omni server, making it possible to easily integrate and historize process data from all of your other devices that aren't using a standard off-the-shelf protocol without having to make the large investment in developing a custom driver.